Soda Lake is a dry lake in the Mojave Desert in Nevada. The sculptor Nigel Hall visited America in 1967 and made drawings of various landscapes, including Soda Lake. The drawings that he made varied from simple but very realistic landscape drawings to simpler and simpler marks, which eventually became like abstract marks, abstract shapes. And these marks in the space eventually resolved themselves into the sculpture Soda Lake. Speaking about the landscape, Nigel has written, the scale was vast and the place had sparse features, so sparse that they served only as minimal markers, an occasional rock, plant, or telegraph pole in an otherwise empty landscape. Spatial intervals and distance were the dominant features of the landscape, which was also intensely silent. The piece itself, the final sculpture, became very simple, the actual elements very sparse themselves, like the marks in the landscape that Nigel described. The piece itself sits in space like a kind of anchor, almost a gate, if you like. And I think it was that which reminded me that a very strong image I had had of dance was of an early collaboration between the American choreographer Martha Graham and the Japanese sculptor Isamu Noguchi. It was a piece called Frontier, and it had a very, very simple sculptural set which gave a sense of enormous territory. The elements of the sculpture itself, I think, are very important. Um, it involves balance. It involves a very thin metal rod that is balanced at an angle between an ellipse that hangs in the air and just laid very lightly on the floor. This became an image which became part of the dance. The ellipse itself channels space upwards. It's a marvelous shape which actually draws space upwards. And then the sculpture is balanced by the downward pull of a thicker vertical piece which hangs beside the ellipse. It also suddenly changes thickness a certain way down, which is a small detail, but just suddenly it becomes a little bit narrower. And then it hangs just an inch or so off the floor, which means that there's movement in the sculpture itself. It hovers, which to me gave this tremendous sense of silence, the silence that Nigel Hall spoke of in the landscape. These were all the things, I think, which attracted me to the sculpture, which made me want to make a dance to it.
I've spoken about the sculpture and the sources for the piece, for both the sculpture and the dance. Um, I'm going to now talk to you a bit more about the material of the dance itself. The piece is really structured in four large sections. The first section is basically floor bound and comes out from underneath the sculpture very slowly with a sense of weight into the earth, into the floor. It just comes out into the space right in front of the sculpture and ends in a pitched over attitude with the arms and the shoulders wide open. The second section then follows and I call this tracing the shapes. It literally reflects all the spatial elements and sculptural elements of the actual piece itself. The dancer traces the oval space above his head also traces the downward plunge of the hanging piece. That section comes out into the space again and ends with something called the sentinel position, which I'll tell you more about in a minute. Then the main dance itself happens, the major section, the third section of the piece, in which the movement moves backwards to the sculpture and then comes out again. The sculpture remains like this anchor point in the space and everything relates to it, but the central section has jumps and turns and strange twistings in the space coming out to the front of the space and then retreating back underneath the sculpture itself. So that all the elements I've been speaking about earlier are in that section. And that section ends again with the sentinel position. This time it's what I call a double sentinel position in that the dancer changes arms and does it with either arm. The final section then fades backstage up to the line of the sculpture itself and it includes slow motion variations of material that's already been seen in the piece, images that you've already seen, moving very, very gently backwards upstage and ending in the same sentinel position, this time seen from side on, which just curls gently down into the floor, into the resting position. The movement itself has certain very basic ingredients um, which give rise to complicated ideas which I, I'm going to try and talk to you about but um, I warn you that it's not going to be easy. Why it's not going to be easy is because the piece itself I think works as what it is, that is a simple dance, quite a linear dance with a dancer in a very neutral black costume in relation to a very clear white space with black marks of sculpture in it too. In that sense it is what some people like to call abstract. The source material of both the sculpture and the movement have many other images behind it. But the danger, I think, is to get so bound up with those images that you begin to think of the whole thing as uh, um, a very representational and literal piece, which it isn't. But I think what goes behind the movement is certainly very important to me. And I suppose the most important element is the fact that having identified the piece as a desert space, having said that there is a sense of territory. There are also, as there would be in any landscape, uh, animal movements. And wha what I'm cautious about is ending up with one thinking that this is some kind of little rat running around in the desert. It's not an, a solo about an animal. It is a dance in the space, but the movements in it refer to images and imagery, which is m meant a lot to me and relates, I think, very clearly to the imagery of the sculpture. So that the initial section, starting in a very, very quiet, almost sleeping position, waking very slowly, 
feeling its way across the floor. Very, very much the weight into the floor, unfolding, feeling the whole of an arm along the floor, the weight of the limbs, not coming out of the floor easily at all, is tremendously important. And that becomes part of the movement recovery throughout the whole piece, even when it gets more active. There are also particular positions which become structural elements which help you to see the way the dance is structured. I've already spoken about one and it's a very important one, the sentinel. The idea of someone looking out over a territory, alert, watching, observing, guarding, all sorts of things they could be, but the sense of somebody looking out. Very much, I think, taken from the movement vocabulary and the imagery of Martha Graham's frontier again. There's also what I call wing spreading, when the arms and the back open slowly. And there is a position, in fact, which we, the dancers and I have always called the big bird. It's about hovering, it's about opening the whole body in, in, a, in a very gentle way, almost influenced by the Tai Chi, by the Chinese Tai Chi Chuan, I think. And that occurs several times in the dance. There's also a lot of movement that springs, if you like, uncoils and suddenly lets go like a spring using tension, using very often the pull of the arm crossed right across the body and suddenly whipping out into a release. It's used in jumps, it's used in turns and it's used 